when I put these shims on, everybody wants to know why and what are they for? I think one of the most important things that you can do for your horse is put a good fitting saddle on them. Uh, you, you have so much muscle back here and then if your saddle doesn't fit and it atrophies this muscle up here, it just kind of puts them out of balance. This muscle that, that runs along their back, it's, it's a really long muscle and it connects the front of your horse to the back of your horse. And so if this muscle is weak and their back's weak, then you, your horse just physically can't be as competitive as he, as he needs to be. This muscle shouldn't ever indent. It should just run, like stay real full. Of course, the stingray is, is really wide right here in the back. She's not quite as wide in the front as she is back here. And so then that's where the shims come in. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what the sheepskin is that I use in my saddle or that, um, you know, whatever I have underneath. And that all that is is because I, I want to have the widest saddle I can on my horse so that her muscle and be real full, it can. And so I have a, my saddle's wide back here and she's not quite as wide in the front. So I'll put that shim to fill in this space and just to lift my saddle up just a little bit to where it allows that muscle to, you know, keep getting bigger. And through the years, I started out with, um, you know, probably a seven, and now she's up to a nine uh, with gullet, which is pretty dang wide. And I feel like, you know, if I keep staying on top of it, she'll just keep getting getting bigger and bigger. And I, I want this muscle to be real full and, and stay full. Because you'll look at some horses and they'll be, have a kind of a pretty big indentation in here. And then you'll look at this muscle and there, there won't be very much muscle. And that's, you know, that's due to your saddle fit. One of the things that I've learned through the years is the importance of the move, allowing this shoulder blade in their, your horse's shoulder to move freely and not having anything on it to constrict it from moving. Anywhere from running to a barrel, picking them up, picking the shoulder up, moving them over, running freely. This is a really big part of your horse's stride, being able to move out and, and run as fast as they can. So through the years, I've kind of figured out that if I put my saddle behind the shoulder blade, then that allows it to move more freely. So that I ride my saddle back um, further than you know I ever have before. Uh, it took me a little bit to kind of get used to that because it is a little bit different feel because you're, you are behind the shoulder blade. But when I saddle my horse, I want the front of the saddle to come right behind the shoulder blade. And I feel like that has allowed my horses to move more freely than they, they have in the past. And uh, like I said, it, it kind of takes them a while to get used to. And you know, when I, I used to saddle my horse, throw my saddle on the, sh on the withers, real high forward, cinch them up, get off, get on, ride, and my saddle would move back. I'd get back off, pull it forward, and so it was a constant battle. But now, uh, you know what I mean? Get them on, it, I put it behind, and I never have to move my saddle. And I feel like it, it makes my, my saddle fit better, and it helps my horse, too. I have a lot of people ask me about the, the shim that I use on um, Stingray and all, on all of my horses. They'll see it in pictures and, and don't quite understand why I use it. But it's a sheepskin or a piece of neoprene wedge. And uh, when I, my saddles are, are so wide back here to fit Stingray. And all it is is it's filling in the space to, to make it more even. She's not quite as wide in the front as she is in the back. So I, I put this in the, in the front of my saddle to just kind of fill in and make it a more even feel. And uh, you know, it doesn't mean that my saddle doesn't fit her. It means I'm, I'm helping because the, there's a, a lot of horses that are, are wider in the back and they never will be as wide in the front. And some horses don't need a shim because you know, they're withers and the front of their, their back um, are the same 
all the way through the, the middle of their back. So every horse is different. So this is it's just a little, little aid and it, it sits right there underneath my saddle. Uh, the one thing about saddle fit is it's a work in progress because it, it can change daily. Uh, your horse gets on the road, they maybe lose a little bit of weight, and so they get just a little bit thinner in here, and you may have to adjust your pad or your shim. And so I try to be real conscious every day of how my saddle's fitting. It's just like a bit. What, I may need to change my bit today. Um, to work on something and so uh, you know I may need to change the width of the, the shim but I really try to be aware of my horse's back and the goal is to get her as wide as she can. The best way to check your saddle fit is to put your saddle up there with no pad and really be able to feel what's going on underneath. So uh, I know that she's pretty wide. This is a nine inch gullet and as you can see it goes down Hill just a little bit, but I know that I stick my hand underneath here and I run my hand along the bars of the saddle and I just let it lay on the back of my hand and I'm I'm looking for even pressure. There's going to be pressure, but you don't want uh, like a, a sharp pressure. You want it to be real even. Um, you want it to not be like this. You want it to be more like this type of a pressure. Just let it lay on the back of your hand and so it's the, it's a real even cons consistent pressure all the way to the back because she is so wide in here and, and this gullet is wide I'm gonna just stick the shim underneath and you don't want to go any further back than the swells okay I'm gonna go and ahead and stick my hand underneath and, and make sure that it's still consistent and um, I'm just doing exactly putting it like where I was when there was no no saddle on there's no rock, got rid of the rock. I've got my saddle where it's right behind the shoulder blade. It's right where I want it. It's got, it's where she has the, the freedom to move that shoulder uh, as freely as she wants and stretch out and run fast. I, I know it, it fits. I've put my hand underneath and you know, I just, I feel real confident that this is uh, what my horse needs to, to make sure that the, the saddle fits the best it should. That's what I'll do to make sure that, you know, my saddle fits, saddle or without a uh, pad and, and check, make sure everything's going good. And now I'll th put the pad on and saddle her just how I had her saddled a second ago. Sorry about that stingray. Put my shim right there to fill in just that little bit of space that she needs. Okay, make sure, and one thing that, you know, make sure that you have the shim even on both sides. Make sure once you get the pad on, sometimes it's hard to see exactly where your saddle is in comparison to the shoulder blade, but I'll stick my hand underneath and just make sure that it's right behind the shoulder blade where it needs to go. <clears throat> Martin Sari came up with the adjustable rigging so that no matter where you put your saddle, you can adjust your cinch. Uh, I put it far as far forward as I can just so that the cinch goes in the small of her belly. Got my strings in case I need to tie something on. Like a rain jacket. We're ready. Never know, we may have to be out ranching or something. So at the end of the day, your, your overall goal is to try to, to help your horse stay as physically conditioned and, and fit as you can muscle-wise so that you can be as competitive as you can and your, your horse can do what they need to do. And if you try to be real aware of that and work you know, every day and, and pay attention, it, it should pay off.